my friend <clears throat> who agrees with me about what the Bible teaches about final judgment often says to people, I don't think hell exists. <clears throat> and I cringe when she says that because uh, it's not that we don't think the thing in the Bible called hell is true. But people think of hell like, so are you going with majority? Are you going with, uh, like, I'm going to, like, what does that say about a person when they take the um, definition of the majority and then deny that they believe in that? And then they communicate that by saying, I don't believe in hell. So is that true? Is that a true statement? That Rebecca doesn't believe in hell? Well, if you're one of those those Southern Baptist types that think you're not a saved Christian unless you believe OSAS and uh, that God tortures people forever in fire and he's going to dunk them in hot lava forever. And when they're, they're going to be swimming in a sea of hot lava and in, as they finally a achingly breach the surface, God grabs them by the nape of the neck and then turns their head and says, and the, and you, you, the person cries out, How long, oh God? Oh my God, how much longer? It's been 10,000 years as you su suck in the sulfuric air. And God says, You've only just begun. And he dunks you back down to the bottom. Like, if you don't believe that, right? You're not a Christian. But, so, she doesn't believe in that. Neither do I, and probably nobody does. But something of that kind, right? People have classically believed. So when she says, I don't believe in hell, that's what she's saying. And I agree with that. But I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to say, I don't believe in hell. Because too many people uh, will just shut off and say, I don't, because um, I want to, I want to uh, influence people. I want to, I want it so that your kids, of course, I wouldn't intrude on your parenting or anything, but I'm hoping to influence the next generation uh, away from the false teaching of eternal conscious torment that many churches still teach today and call people who believe in the biblical version of hell from a careful study uh, heretics and I think those people are trashy and a joke and shouldn't be um, teaching anything about the Bible or a congregation if they have that attitude about it because they're ideologues and I don't want to be an ideologue because ideologues are stupid um, so, but the thing about hell, so is Rebecca wrong? Ooh, I gave it away. <laughs> well, she's a heretic anyway, right? Because this, that, and the other, and Jamie's a heretic for this reason, that, or the other. It's funny. We have very different Christianities, but, uh, I recognize Rebecca as someone who knows how to treat people in a very profound way that most Christians don't, even with really good doctrine. So I recognize that in people. And we disagree. So, uh, so, what does it mean? People tell me we're not under the law, and I'm like, and I, on that one, I kind of want to say, yes, we are. <laughs> but if you mean we're not under the law, like Paul's teaching in Romans six, I got, yeah, okay, yeah, we're not under the law. But does that mean we don't obey the law? No, of course not. Depends on what you mean by the law. Do you mean the whole entire Mosaic Covenant, including everything it says in the Old Testament that you had to do to come near to God? you have to do that? Are we under that in the sense that people mean we're not under the law? Meaning we don't do it? Uh, yeah, we're not under the law in that way. Are we under the law that where we uh, don't take we don't take the interpretation of the Sermon on the Mount as being for us? Yes, we are under the law in that way, in the way that you think under the law is meant in the Bible. The way you think you're not under the law, we are under the law when it comes to the Sermon on the Mount being directions for us on how to live. If that's, under, if that's under the law, then yeah, we're under the law. But we're not under the condemnation of the Mosaic Covenant, or we're not under the Mosaic, we're not under uh, um, condemnation for our past sins that Jesus forgave us for. We're not under that that they were under for rejecting Jesus when he came and he was there in the first century and people who were Jews who had received the law and weren't receiving Messiah are condemned by the law. We're not under the law like that. So, you know, this is where charity kicks in and makes you not look like an idiot and makes you a better person. So, 
I believe hell exists. But there's a sense where I would say, well, actually, I don't even believe that. I don't believe there's a place where God is has executing final judgment on people who have died. So I don't think it exists now. I think the concept that is in the Bible about final judgment being a fiery, permanent uh, end to all that which doesn't belong in God's kingdom, like suffering, pain, sin, and those who do not, uh, those that cling to that instead of God will be destroyed in an event on the surface of the earth when God destroys everything that doesn't belong in his kingdom. Finally, once for all, in a permanent, eternal sense, he ends all those things in a grand scene of judgment before the watching universe. I believe in that. That exists at a future point in time as God's atoning work to fully redeem his... In Higher creation back to how it was intended from the beginning. That atoning work of Christ will occur when Satan is destroyed in the fire of hell, rather being perpetuated in some sort of made up fairy tale uh, from pagan religion that seeped its way into Christian thinking and has ruined the understanding of God in the minds of those who love Jesus for hundreds of years. And it's about damn time somebody did something about it.